the SIR dynamic model of infectious disease transmission and its analogy with chemical kinetics. I'm Corey Simon. I'm an assistant professor of chemical engineering at Oregon State University. Mathematical models of epidemics are useful for both forecasting epidemics and understanding how public health interventions affect the trajectory of an epidemic. The intention of this presentation is twofold. First, from a pedagogical standpoint, I want to illustrate that undergraduate students in chemistry and chemical engineering can quickly peer into the inner workings of compartmental epidemic models using their knowledge of chemical kinetics. The second intention is knowledge exchange between the research communities in chemical kinetic modeling and epidemic modeling. You can read more about the content of this presentation in Peer J Physical Chemistry. Let's dive into the SIR model. The SIR model is a classic epidemic model, first published in 1927. SIR stands for susceptible, infectious, and removed. Each individual in the population belongs to one of these three categories. Now, think of each individual in the population as a molecule that can undergo chemical transformations. Also, think of the population as a batch reactor. There are two reactions that occur in this batch reactor. In the first reaction, an infectious individual comes into contact with a susceptible individual and infects them with a disease. That susceptible person then moves into the infectious category, assuming that there's zero delay between being infected and being infectious. This is analogous to an autocatalytic reaction where the reactant is the susceptible individual and the autocatalyst is the infectious individual. The second reaction that occurs in the reactor is when an infectious individual either recovers or dies. We assume that recovery from the disease confers permanent immunity to reinfection. Either way, when that infectious individual recovers or dies, they are removed from participation in disease transmission. That is, they cannot catch the disease, nor can they give it to anyone who is susceptible. This is analogous to when the autocatalyst either decays or converts to a deactivated form, R. These are the two reactions that happen inside the batch reactor. Note that we're neglecting an R to S reaction. That's because we're assuming that an infectious individual who recovers the disease is conferred permanent immunity to reinfection as opposed to temporary immunity. Note the absence of any arrows going in or out of the system. It's a batch reactor. So this is a closed system. We're neglecting immigration or emigration, which is now just to flow in and out of the reactor. We're also neglecting births and deaths caused by factors other than disease. To define the state variables in the SIR model, let S, I, and R be the fraction of the population that is susceptible infectious, or removed at time t. Because the population is closed and we neglect demographics, the sum of these three state variables is 1. Our goal now is to formulate a set of differential equations that govern the evolution of these state variables s, i, and r. First, let us develop a kinetic model for the autocatalytic reaction. The incidence rate of the disease is defined as the number of new infections per unit time. If we view the reaction of s and i as a bimolecular reaction, the S and I intervals do have to come together and collide in the batch reactor in order to react. We can invoke the law of mass action to model the incidence rate of the disease as a transmission rate constant beta times S times I. This is a bilinear symmetric function of S and I. Intuitively, if the number of infectious folks doubles, so does the incident rate of the disease. And if the number of susceptible folks doubles, that's more people for the infectious folks to infect, and then, then the incidence rate also doubles. Second, we can develop a kinetic model for the removal of infectious individuals and model the removal rate, which is the number of infectious folks that recover or die per unit time, as a first-order decay with rate constant gamma. This flow diagram summarizes the two reaction models under the SIR model. Each arrow depicts per capita flow rates of individuals from one compartment to another. On the left, we're imagining the population as a set of three different chemical species mixing around in a well-mixed batch reactor. On the right are the set of three coupled nonlinear differential equations that govern the evolution of S, I, and R based on the incidence rate of the disease and the removal rate of infectious individuals. To give you some insights here, this is the incidence rate of the disease, so the number of new infections per unit time. It appears in the differential equation for S with a minus sign because whenever a new infection occurs, that depletes the susceptible pool of people. 
The same term appears with a plus sign in the differential equation for i because whenever a susceptible is infected, they enter the i category. And now we here have the removal rate of infectious individuals appearing in the i differential equation with a minus sign. And again, with the same term with a plus sign because once an infection person is removed, they enter the removed category. The analogy here is that susceptible folks are like the reactant, infectious folks are like the autocatalyst, and recovered folks, or folks who have died from the disease, are much like a deactivated autocatalyst. They do not participate in the reaction. The first two differential equations are all you need to specify the dynamics of the SIR model. R then follows from 1 minus S minus I. So to summarize, there are only two parameters in the SIR model. The first is the transmission rate constant beta. It's the product of the average frequency of contacts of an individual in the population and the transmissibility of the disease, which is the probability of transmission conditioned upon contact. The second parameter is recovery rate constant gamma, the inverse of which is the average duration of infectiousness. So the average duration of infectiousness, we can determine that from contact tracing studies or from viral shedding studies. The transmission rate constant beta, we could identify that by fitting to case counts as a function of time. So we fit the model to um, data. Much like how we identify commonly reaction rate constants in chemical kinetic models by fitting to concentration time series data. So the replacement number will facilitate our study of the dynamics of the SIR model. You might have seen this in the news. The replacement number, R, is the expected number of folks that are directly infected by a typical infectious individual that's mixing in the population over the course of their infectiousness. Under the SIR model, an infectious individual is expected to produce beta times S new infections per unit, unit time. That's just the incidence rate of the disease divided by I, right? So um, the incidence rate per infectious individual. And this infectious individual, while producing these infections at a certain rate per time, is expected to be infectious for a duration of 1 over gamma. And so, of course, the product of those two then gives you the replacement number because that's the number of people that this infectious individual, this one infectious individual, is going to infect over the entire course of their infectiousness. Okay? And it's a function of time because if there are a lot of susceptible people, that's going to go up. If there are a few susceptible people, that's going to go down. The replacement number is key to characterizing SIR dynamic because it indicates whether or not the number of infectious folks is increasing or decreasing in time t. In the differential equation for i, we can factor out the i from the right-hand side, and we can see that di dt is positive if this term here is positive, and it's negative if this term here is negative, because, of course, the concentration of i is always greater than zero. And so if the replacement number is greater than one, what that implies is that the number of infectious folks is increasing. And that's very intuitive, right? If before this infectious person recovers, they're expected to produce more than one infection, they're going to replace themselves and propagate the reaction. So what makes the replacement number large? Well, if you have a large transmission rate constant, if the infectious people are infectious for a very long time, so they can infect a lot of people before they recover, or if there's a high concentration of susceptible folks. Those are the factors that can increase the replacement number. And the last one is why it's a function of time. The first two under the SIR model, at least, are constant. I also need to introduce the basic reproduction number R0 or R0. This is defined as the transmission rate constant times the average duration of infectiousness. The basic reproduction number is really a specific case of the replacement number. The case corresponds to whenever we initialize the system as having a very small number of infectious individuals and the rest are all susceptible. And this allows us to make the approximation that the concentration of susceptible folks is approximately 1. And then the replacement number is equal to the basic reproduction number. And of course, this only occurs at the initial time. Because if an epidemic ensues, then over time, S is going to be depleted and this approximation will no longer hold. All right. So to summarize, the basic reproduction number is a replacement number. Initially, when you introduce a very small fraction a very small number of infectious folks into an all-susceptible population.
So the related as follows, um, the replacement number is R0 times S. So one is a function of time, the replacement number. The basic reproduction number is not a function of time. It's really only a property of the disease in the population. Now let's dive into the SIR model dynamics. Throughout, we'll consider the initial conditions where we introduce a small number of infectious folks into a large population of susceptible folks. Mathematically, here are the initial conditions. Note that these um, initial conditions for S and I, they add up to one because each individual in the population is initially susceptible or infectious. None of them, we're assuming, are in the removed category. This considers a disease that's introduced to the population to which the population has no previous immunity. The chemical kinetics analogy of this is injecting our deactivating autocatalyst I into our batch reactor, which is full of reactant S. A qualitative question we can ask first is, does the disease invade the population or not? And the SIR model recovers threshold behavior. If the initial replacement number is less than one, then the autocatalytic reaction dies out. And this is very intuitive. That's because that catalyst is expected to decay before it can react with an S particle to replace itself. So the disease dies out, the infectious folks recover, and it doesn't, the disease doesn't invade the population. On the other hand, if the initial replacement number is greater than one, then the catalyst particles catalyze the autocatalytic reaction faster than they deactivate via I to R. And then the autocatalytic reaction propagates and the disease does invade the population. All right, so now let's assume that the initial replacement number is greater than one. Here I have the basic reproductive number set at two, and then a small fraction of initial infectious folks. Uh, and this is the shape of an epidemic. So first we'll, we'll look at the um, number of infectious folks. You can see that it starts off small, this is the initial condition here, and then it, it rises, peaks, and then falls and diminishes to zero. So the infection dies out. And as infectious folks grow, then you can see that the susceptible pool of people is monotonically depleted, okay? And as these infectious folks recover, they accumulate in the R category. And so you can see this R category monotonically increasing. Something interesting to note here is that the epidemic dies off before all people are infected. Um, and that's a key feature of the SIR model. Um, we can look at a different depiction of the solution by viewing the trajectory of the solution in the S I phase plane. So here's a number of here's a fraction of susceptible folks. Here's a fraction of infectious folks. On the bottom right, we have the initial condition. Right, um, it starts off with very few infectious folks and almost all susceptible folks. Okay, and then as time goes on, this is a solution trajectory. So here's as time increases. Right, so here what happens is when the fraction of susceptible folks, you can prove that it's when it's um, equal to 1 over the basic reproductive number, that's when you see the peak number of infections. And from there, um, the infection dies off, and you can see after infinite time, the trajectory approaches this point, which is when there are no infectious individuals in the population, and a non-zero fraction remain susceptible. Um, and you can derive this trajectory in the phase plane uh, from the differential equations uh, by, by dividing two and integrating. And you can get this. Um, so this equation is this curve here. And I colored it by time to show that time is progressing as you go from the initial condition to the peak to the final condition. In further analysis of the SIR model, we can derive the final size of the epidemic, the peak prevalence of infectious folks, and the time it takes to reach the peak prevalence of infectious folks all in terms of the basic reproduction number. The SIR model also captures the notion of herd immunity, where the concentration of susceptible folks is reduced such that the replacement number is less than one. In my paper, I outline several extensions to the SIR model, which also have analogies with phenomena in the chemical sciences. In conclusion, the SIR model is much like a batch reactor undergoing two reactions, an autocatalytic reaction between reactant S and autocatalyst I, and where the autocatalyst I decays to a deactivated form. Here, the susceptible folks are analogous to the reactant, infectious folks are analogous to the autocatalyst, and removed folks are analogous to a deactivated form of the autocatalyst. 
C, Peer J Physical Chemistry for the paper. Thank you.